one of the Buddha's essential insights was the suffering that really weighs down the mind. It's the suffering that we create, and that it's unnecessary. And even though we create it and we suffer from it, we cling to it. And this has some unexpected implications. One is that for a lot of us, if we didn't suffer, we'd be lost. Or the idea of not suffering, we feel lost. Sometimes our strongest sense of who we are comes from being treated unjustly. And that's how we define ourselves, by our suffering. By being treated unjustly. And if we were to deny ourselves that perverse pleasure, we'd feel lost. So when other people aren't treating us unjustly, we start treating ourselves unjustly. If other people aren't criticizing us unfairly, we start criticizing ourselves unfairly, because we'd feel lost without that criticism. So to work around this problem, the Buddha has us focus simply on the problem of suffering without asking who's causing this, or who you are, or what you have to do to your sense of self to make it better. Just as look at the suffering in and of itself. That's the important thing, the in and of itself. That helps get you out of all the entanglements that come around from on the one hand, suffering, but on the other hand, clinging to your suffering. When you can look at it simply on its own terms, see it simply as a pattern of cause and effect, without asking yourself how you're involved in it. When you can see that it's unnecessary and you can see that the fact of suffering as it's being caused, and you see the connection. and that you don't have to do that. That helps loosen up your attachment to the suffering. So on the one hand, it's good to understand this process, that you're clinging to the things that cause you to suffer, and that's what defines you. And you don't have to worry about being annihilated if you stop the suffering. Some people that's a scary idea, so again, the Buddha focuses you back on just the suffering in and of itself. Don't ask who's doing this, don't ask how you're involved in it. Just ask, well, what's happening here? Look at things in and of themselves. Start with the breath in and of itself. That's pretty neutral. And ask yourself, what's going on here in the process of breathing? You've realized that you breathe in until it gets uncomfortable, then you breathe out until it starts getting uncomfortable to breathe out, then you stop and then you breathe back in. You're bouncing back and forth between a sense of discomfort. You need to breathe. If you try to stop breathing just by holding your breath, that would be painful too. You've got to breathe, and yet it's breathing between one extreme of breathing out too long and the other extreme of breathing in too long. The breath is an impersonal process. It's something you can watch in and of itself. Fortunately for us, there are not too many elaborate theories about the deeper meaning of breath. It's simply the fact. The breath is now coming in, the breath is now going out. You can't watch a future breath, you can't watch a past breath, you just got the present breath. And it's impersonal. You know that everybody has the same breathing. There's simply the question of, does it feel good not, or 
or not. That's all you've got to ask right now. As for other larger issues, you can put them aside. Get used to dealing just on this level, the immediate experience of the breath in and of itself. And in doing that, that helps to depersonalize the issue of suffering. And from this point of view, you can begin to spread your attention to other problems that need depersonalizing as well. But make sure you've got this foundation strong. That you can stay simply with the issue of now the breath is coming in, now the breath is going out. Are you enjoying it? Because you know, you can make the breath really gratifying, so it feels good coming coming in down through the lungs, down through the abdomen. It feels refreshing. It feels gratifying. And it's just that fact of how it feels in the present moment without you having to get involved in thoughts of I identity. the narratives of your life, your worldviews. Get used to looking at things simply on this level, just the experience in and of itself. This gives you a new foundation. You get in touch with the ability to make the pleasant, make the present moment pleasant. And it's not threatening. It's gratifying. You shift your center of gravity away from the sense of self that needs to suffer in order to maintain its identity to a different sense of self. One, where there's a sense of pleasure, and two, there's more of a sense of competence. It's a skill you can develop. And you see the results immediately. And it's this new center of gravity that helps you act, act as a fulcrum. You can pry loose your other attachments, the old ways of identifying yourself. They've done studies on people going through psychotherapy, trying to figure out which method, Jungian, Freudian, whatever, works best. And they discovered that the actual method didn't make all that much difference. It was the ability of the patient to get inside his or her body, to fully inhabit the body. and then to work through whatever issues there were in the mind from that standpoint. This is what you're doing as you work with the breath. You're getting in the body, getting more sensitive to the body, creating a new center of gravity for yourself. And a new area of sensitivity. A lot of the Buddhist texts talk about you know, the knowledge you gain from meditation as a form of vision, something you see, working towards knowledge and vision, they say. The first experience of awakening is the opening of the Dharma eye. But there are also a lot of passages that are just talking about Inhabiting the body. All the teaching about jhana is 
getting a sense of ease and well-being from the breath, and then spreading that sense of ease and well-being so that it permeates the whole body. Some of the texts talk about touching the various dimensions that are available from, from jhana, touching them with your body. And one of the texts actually talks about seeing with the body. In their texts, they talk about the Buddha as the all-around eye. His whole body has becomes an organ of vision, an organ of sight. So one of the things we want to do as we practice is to get out of our heads where we have all these notions about who we are and how we relate to other people, how our identity is maintained in the face of the onslaughts of the world outside. And learn to get back and inhabit your body. And inhabiting it, the body itself becomes an organ of vision, an organ of sight. You see things going on in the body you didn't see before. You resensitize the body. And as a meditator, you work from a new center of gravity. So that when you start taking apart your other habits that create your sense of self, the habits that make you suffer but that you cling to these habits so tightly, when you're operating from this other center of gravity, it's a lot less threatening. You don't feel that you're going to be obliterated by the process. In fact, taking apart these old habits becomes something that you really like to do. Because you're looking from another point of view. You're looking from the point of view of a full body awareness. So this is why it's so important that you get in touch with the breath and you learn to breathe with the whole body. The whole body breathing in, the whole body breathing out. It develops the sensitivity, it develops the foundation that you need to do some really radical work on how you're causing yourself to suffer and why you cling to the ways that you cause yourself to suffer. Because it's only from taking this different point of view that the work can actually be done.